Hi, welcome to the channel. My name is Elena. I'm a librarian and book lover. My sister Erin edits our videos. And today I'm doing a little roundup. I'm gonna go through all of the books that I read in May, tell you what I liked about them, what I didn't like, the star rating I gave them, what they're about, all the good stuff that you wanna know. And I'm just gonna do a little get ready with me. Low emphasis on the makeup, but if you're interested in anything that's on my face right now, I will have it listed in the description box. So with that said, let's get into it. May was such a good reading month. I didn't have a TBR set. I was totally winging it. And it was one of those months where I didn't realize until the end how good it really was. I read 10 books, 3,199 pages. That's a lot. Like for me, that's quite a lot. That was a good reading month for sure. There were also a lot of audiobooks in my life in May. I had a lot of repetitive work, the sort of thing that doesn't take up a lot of brain space, you know? So it's just nice to have something to listen to while you're doing the work. So yeah, I went through a lot of audiobooks, which is funny because I feel like all year I have not been listening to many audiobooks, but it all caught up to me in May. So anyway, let's go through the 10 books that I read. The first book of May was Bookshops and Bone Dust by Travis Baldry. This book is a prequel to Legends and Lattes, that cozy mystery one that everybody was obsessed with when it came out. I feel like it really brought cozy fantasy to like the forefront, you know? And I freaking loved Legends and Lattes. That book is about a warrior orc named Viv who gives up her fighting, adventuring, mercenary days to open a cafe. It's so cute. Viv is adorable. I just love her. And Legends and Lattes is honestly just so, so good. It will make you crave pastries and coffee though. <laughs> so Bookshops and Bone Dust takes us back in time to the early days of Viv's mercenary career. She gets injured and she has to kind of sit things out in this little cozy coastal town while her foot heals from its, not, is it her foot? And in the meantime, she sort of is forced to slow down and she starts helping out at a local bookshop to kind of pass the time. I really love the trope of you know, fixing up the local bookshop that is about to go out of business kind of thing. And I also love seeing Viv fall in love with reading. I feel like that's a journey a lot of us can relate to, right? Especially because she basically discovers steamy romanticy books, which I mean, so many of us get back into reading as adults through steamy romanticy, am I right? So watching Viv get into reading was super fun. Overall though, I didn't think this one was quite as magical as Legends and Lattes. Being a prequel, like, you know, the reader already knows where Viv ends up, how her story goes, what's going to happen, which just makes an already low stakes book even more low stakes. There was an adventure plot with a dangerous necromancer in the book, and I found myself just not really caring that much about that plot. You know, I didn't feel worried because I knew Viv was going to be fine. There's also a little romance, which is cute. It's like a first love kind of thing. Um, queer, of course, which we love. But again, I knew it was an end game for Viv. So I just didn't feel that invested in the romance. The food descriptions were still really on point though. Like there was one description of crispy breakfast potatoes. <sighs> Crispy breakfast potatoes, like nothing is better than that. To me personally, the cinnamon rolls from book one, great. Cinnamon rolls are tasty, but cinnamon rolls, crispy breakfast potatoes, don't you think? In the end, I gave this book four stars. It was really good, but not amazing. I am obsessed with naming a dog pot roast now. <laughs> that was so cute. Next, I read A Deal with the Elf King by Elise Kova. I read this book specifically for a video Erin and I did where we explain whether or not you might want to read these romanticy books with really dumb titles. <laughs> it's just kind of a tongue-in-cheek video idea. This book has an epically dumb name in my opinion and the cover is just as bad, but did I like the actual book, you know, like what's on the inside? No, no, I did not. It was mediocre at best. I go very in depth about the tropes, the spice level, the pros and cons of this book in that video. So 
Go watch that if you want more details. I'll just keep it really brief here. Essentially, this book is set in a world where a human woman must marry the elf king every 100 years to keep up a peace treaty. And one thing that I do want to point out here, the cover of this book makes you think it's going to be super spicy. No, not the case. Very little spice, in fact. I don't personally love super spicy books, so it's not like that ruined the book for me or anything. But just from the cover, I feel like any reader would assume that this book is going to be at least three chili peppers on the spice scale. I'm just giving you that heads up now. If that's what you're looking for, this book is definitely not for you. I was going to say probably, but no, it's not. <laughs> it is not spicy. I just didn't love it. It felt really basic and formulaic. The ending was so anticlimactic. I really was not into the Elf King love interest. I mean, this man has the sex appeal of a grandpa, okay? Just no. <laughs> so for me, it was two stars. Quick makeup side note, this About Face Foundation, it's like, it's called the Performer Skin Enhancing Foundation. It's so good. It's really lightweight, buildable coverage, feels like absolutely nothing on my skin. And best of all, it's like a perfect shade match for me. I have the shade F2 Olive, which is just a fair olive shade. And I find it so hard to perfectly match foundations to my skin tone. And this shade is just perfect. It just sinks right in, looks great. I've been loving this foundation. It almost makes me want to not self tan this summer because then this won't match me anymore. And yes, I could just get a deeper color, I probably will do that. Okay, next we have How to Keep House While Drowning by Casey Davis. This is like a self-development book. And here's the thing, I do okay at keeping my house clean, all right? Some days or weeks are better than others. Would I say I am drowning? No, definitely not. But I do have a chronic illness that sometimes makes it difficult to stay on top of care tasks as Casey Davis calls them, stuff like, you know, keeping keeping your dish, no, you know what care tasks are. I have type one narcolepsy, if you're wondering, and that's basically what this book is about. It contains strategies for how to keep your house relatively clean and manageable, even while you're struggling. <laughs> I liked it a lot. The tips were actionable and useful. The tone was friendly and non-judgmental, and the delivery was super inclusive and digestible. If you struggle with ADHD or depression or something like narcolepsy or another chronic illness, I definitely recommend this book if you're struggling. It even has like an abridged version for people with ADHD who struggle to focus for long periods of time on things like reading. Uh, if you're watching this, you're probably a huge reader, so you probably don't struggle with that. But if you do, she has kind of an abridged version in the book where you can go through it and get all the best tips and tricks that you need without it being too long-winded. I gave this four stars. The next three books are books two, three, and four from the Lachlan Feuds series. Erin convinced me to read this series in a romanticy video we did a little while back, and I'm so glad she did because I love this series now. I read book one, I think in April, no, March, yeah. And I'd been dying to get back into it, so I just smashed out the rest of the series in May. And again, you can watch that initial video if you want a breakdown of the tropes, spice level, pros and cons, all of that. But here, I will tell you that this series is delightful. <laughs> it's about a princess who sneaks into the neighboring country to smuggle out some vodka. And while she's doing that, she gets captured. And there are some pretty serious political repercussions to sneaking into another country to steal, essentially. <laughs> Her home country is very Celtic inspired and the neighboring country is very Russian inspired. So there's some fun cultural stuff with food descriptions, dress descriptions, that kind of thing is my jam. Rowan is probably the best female main character that I've ever read. First of all, she's funny. Like she is genuinely so funny. She's also confident and strong and smart, but also flawed. I mean, truly one of the most likable protagonists that I've ever read in a romanticy series. My little Dollar Tree fan <laughs> kicked the bucket. It won't turn on. I tried changing the batteries. I don't know. It just gave up on me. So now I'm just using a giant ColourPop palette to fan down my setting spray. 
The love interest in the Lachlan Feud series is also just so, so hot. <laughs> like truly fan yourself worthy hot. And the romance has a super delicious, like long, slow burn, which is just my favorite thing. I love all of the tension and the angst and the will they, won't they. And it's definitely here in this series. I literally started book three the same night that I finished book two. And then I finished book three the very next day. That's how hooked I was on this series. And they aren't too long. They're just easy and fun to read. I highly recommend them. All of these books got five stars from me. Okay, and next we have Sunreach by Jancy Patterson and Brandon Sanderson. This is one of the novellas that goes with the Skyward series. You're meant to read the novellas kind of in between the main books of Skyward. This series is a YA science fiction set in a future where humanity has been hunted across the galaxy and a few survivors had to escape to this small planet called Detritus and basically rebuild society. They're trying to escape the planet, but to do so, they have to fight an alien species called the Krell that are keeping them trapped on this planet. Our main character, Spensa, wants to be a pilot so she can fight Krell and save humanity, but also to kind of avenge her father's name. Her father was involved in this scandal. He was a pilot too, and he ended up getting branded like a coward and it's brought all this shame and social repercussions on Spence's family. So she's trying to, you know, make up for the mistakes of her father, I guess. I was blown away by Skyward and the second in the series. And then following the correct reading order, I had to pivot to this novella, which follows some of the side characters from book one. This one wasn't quite as compelling for me as the first two main novels were. And I don't think that's because it was mainly written by Jancy Patterson and not strictly Brandon Sanderson. The writing style was still really good. It's just that I guess I don't care about the side characters as much as I do Spensa. And the plot here was kind of predictable. Book two, Star Sight, ended on such a cliffhanger that I was just dying to get back to Spensa's story. But I think I still have to read at least one more novella, maybe all of the novellas? Before I go back to the main books, I'll have to look that up before I mess up my reading order here. But I still liked it. I gave it three and a half stars. I do think that's probably the lowest I've, it is the lowest that I've ever rated a book with Brandon Sanderson's name on the cover, you know? But it is what it is. It was three and a half stars, okay? Next is Funny Story by Emily Henry. Erin and I recently went down to the beach and filmed a reading vlog with some summary beach type reads, some romances. And this is one we both read. Emily Henry is Erin's favorite author. And I really loved the other Emily Henry book that I've read, which is Book Lovers. So we decided to crack into the new release. Okay, I just added a little bit of definition with my Patrick Todd Major Dimensions 3 palette. And then I'm gonna put this Pokemon and ColourPop Super Shock Shadow all over the lid. It's the Bulbasaur one. It's a beautiful duochrome. It's green, but it's also purple. Can you see that? It's so cool. So in Funny Story, the main character is Daphne and she moved to Michigan to be with her fiance, Peter. But after his bachelor party, this motherfucker comes home and tells her that he's leaving her for his childhood girl best friend. Okay. And Daphne literally has a week to, you know, move out and move on basically. Meanwhile, the girl best friend Petra dumps her boyfriend Miles to run off with Peter. So Daphne moves in with Miles because, you know, there's obviously a vacancy now and she doesn't really have a lot of options. And the love story turns out to be between Daphne and Miles and they met through their exes running off together. So that's why it's a funny story, get it? This looks so pretty. I loved this book. Miles might be my new favorite book boyfriend. I love how funny and sweet he is. A little bit rough around the edges, you know? He's a wine guy. He knows everybody in town and everybody knows him. He's great. And Daphne is a children's librarian. So of course, you know, she's like a kindred spirit to me. Us librarians, we gotta stick together, you know? Even though I will say, they kept talking in the book about how her style is very buttoned up and it's like she's keeping a secret because she wears all these cardigans buttoned up and stuff. 
And I was a little bit like, all right, it's kind of a librarian stereotype, you know? A lot of us don't dress in buttoned up cardigans every day, <laughs> but I still love Daphne and librarian representation, you know, it's always good. So I was so invested in their story and I read this over audiobook. So Julia Whalen's narration was on point. It felt conversational. I felt like I was just chatting with some friends, you know, I was getting so pissed off at Peter and at Daphne's childhood best friend who was not supportive of the breakup and ended up siding with her ex. Like I was just like, you know, us girls, girls, we gotta look out for each other. This is a mess up situation for Daphne. I was so rooting for her. I absolutely loved this book, if you can't tell. The spice is mild, it's chill, but it's not non-existent, okay? It's not like closed door or anything. There is spice and I thought it was steamy and well done and not cringy. <laughs> and I'm very picky. Most spice is cringy, but Emily Henry, I think she really knows how to do it. It's romantic, it was good. I loved this book even more than book lovers and Erin agrees it's one of Emily Henry's best, so five stars. Okay, pause for eyeliner moment. I cannot talk while I do this. And my next summer beach read was Just for the Summer by Abby Jimenez. This was my first book by this author. I did not have high hopes going into it. Funny Story is a tough act to follow. But this book really surprised me. It's about Emma, a travel nurse with abandonment issues, and Justin, who is like a techie guy who is being forced to take responsibility for his younger siblings. Justin and Emma meet on Reddit because they both have a self-described curse where whenever they date someone, it doesn't work out with that person and then that person goes on to meet the love of their life immediately afterwards. It's basically the same plot as that old Dane Cook movie. Remember Dane Cook? He made a movie in the 2000s called Good Luck Chuck, which had like the same plot. I, I didn't look that up, I think it's called Good Luck Chuck. Luckily the book doesn't focus too much on this curse aspect, which I think is good because it's a little cheesy to me, honestly but that's just kind of the setup for how they meet. It's more about Emma and Justin falling in love while dealing with a lot of pressures in their personal lives, especially parentification and the trauma that goes along with that. They both have serious challenges going on in their personal lives. It was so real and raw. The book had me fully sobbing at some of the more emotional points. It felt very realistic and intense. Ultimately, I gave this book four and a half stars. It was a little bit slow in the first half and I wasn't totally sold on Justin as like a sexy male love interest, you know? I thought he was cute, but kind of weird. <laughs> so that's why I didn't get five stars, but it was still a really good book. I definitely recommend it. And the last book I have here is Dawn by Octavia E. Butler. This is the first book in the Exogenesis series, which is also sometimes called Lilith's Brood, but Exogenesis is easier to say, so that's what I'm going with. I read this kind of randomly. It was available right away on Libby, and I was in a situation where I needed a book and I only had like five minutes to pick something, and I love Octavia E. Butler, so when I saw this, I was just like, cool, let's go with that. And I'm so glad that I picked it up. This book blew my mind. This is an adult science fiction series set in the future. In this future, we, as in humanity, we have nearly destroyed ourselves and did destroy the planet through nuclear war. And we nearly became extinct. A small number of people were rescued by an alien species called the Owen Kali. And this small group is humanity's only chance at continuation. I have no idea what lip I'm doing. Hmm. No, let's do this Bobby Brown. So the Owen Kali rescued us and are providing us with the means to basically reset Earth's ecosystem and save our planet and continue our species. But there is a catch, of course. <laughs> the catch is that the Owen Kali their species survives by genetically merging 
with other civilizations. So humanity cannot survive without their help but our DNA will have to be genetically modified as a condition for our survival. Meaning their children will not be entirely human. Creepy, but intriguing, right? This book is seriously mind-blowing. There are a lot of complicated topics being tackled here, especially consent, freedom, gender identity, racism and xenophobia, and just the inherent flaws of humanity. It's not a cheerful or an easy read, but I cannot stop thinking about it. I will be reading the next book in the series, which is called Adulthood Rights in June. So we'll see if it can live up to the high bar set by the first one. It was five stars. That wraps up my May reads and get ready with me. I hope you enjoyed this. I'll put all of the makeup that I used today in the description box if you're interested in it and the books as well. Check out my latest TBR video if you want to see what I'll be reading in June and like this video if you liked it. Comment down below and let me know what's on your TBR so I can add it to my TBR, okay? The best part of reading is swapping recommendations back and forth. And also, please subscribe to our channel if you're interested in book content, a little bit of beauty, a little bit of lifestyle, all kinds of stuff. So until our next video, see you soon.